I was thinking if I should share the story or not. But eventually I thought I should share with you the story about Festo. It happened on our second day on Okarewa. We thought to ourselves, let's go and just check out the island, see what is here. And we heard about this palace that belonged to one of the chiefs who no longer lived there, but the palace was still there. We thought, let's go and just check it out, see if we can hear some of the story behind it, and maybe we can also go in there. We got in our car, start driving, and as we were approaching the intersection, and we're about to take a turn to the right, suddenly a man appears in front of our car, like out of nowhere. He will look like a little bit crazy, I don't know. He didn't look like he was in his mind. He was standing in front of our car and would do weird dances. And uh, he had something in his hand, was like shaking it around. But also he had a jacket on and he would take it off, drop it on the floor and act weirdly. I was a little bit surprised and we had our friend with us, a local pastor. I was looking at him just kind of look at his reaction, what he is doing, because I didn't know what is happening. And I see him praying in tongues and then started casting out demons. And that moment I was thinking, okay, it must be a demon, demon possessed man, because uh, I was not familiar with something like that. I would see people having demons before, but like this was something that I haven't seen before. Yeah, so at this moment I believe, okay, this man, has a demon and something must be happening inside of him that he is reacting to our presence. Also the man, um, like he would not just looking at us and shaking his hands but also he would start saluting, like doing something like that. And I asked my friend, what is he doing? And he would say to us, he is saluting and the demons inside of him recognizing our presence and recognizing our authority. And that made me even more believing, okay, this must be a demon. And at that moment, I got excited because I thought, okay, if this is a demon, he will um, flee in just a moment. I was thinking about those stories in the, um, in the Bible, in the Acts of the Apostles, uh, and how they cast out demons. So I thought to myself, okay, when we get this man, we will be able to pray for him and he will be set free and this will be a huge testimony. And this man uh, keeps walking alongside us and then suddenly he runs in front of us and um, we see that he is trying to leave. I think to myself, okay, these demons, they don't want us to get close to this man. And we keep driving and we're approaching this seashore. We get out of the car, see this man running like beyond the seashore into the water. And I think, okay, those demons, they really want to this man in their possession. <laughs> they don't want us. They don't want us to be close. Um, and eventually, this man will go into, get into the water, and try to almost swim away, but he couldn't. We uh, were standing on the, like, um, still on the shore there, trying to call him and get him to us, but he would not listen. He was afraid or something like that. Like I thought, those demons, they tried to keep him away from us. But then we see a man um, working there. We ask him if he knew about this man and maybe he can share a little bit more about him. And yes, he knew this man. He was telling us that it's been for many years like this and this man lives um, close in this area. He has been crazy. People knew, know about it and they just leave him by, by himself. And eventually we got this man um, out of the water and he came to us, he got his clothes on again. And thankfully my friend Tapio, he had a lot of wisdom and said to us, guys, before we pray for him, let's just sit down and talk to him, find out what has happened to him. So we found a place where we sit down and we started asking questions. And something that surprised me because when we asked his name, he would not speak. But he would use his finger, use his finger, and just write his name 
on the ground, like into the dirt. His name Festo. Okay, we found out his name. And then we ask another question and he would not speak. He would try to write it down. So I think to myself, okay, this must be a demon that does not give him permission to speak. And I would say to, to Festo, Festo, you have the permission to speak. Speak to us. So I tried to, like, um, because I knew we have authority over demons. And Festo would start speaking and talking to us. So I, w I would think, okay, this must be a demon. He is listening to me. We uh, try to understand more of his story and what has happened to him. And you will tell us about that he has been a pastor and then something has happened to him and he lost his mind. And then also the man that um, was working there will tell us, yeah, someone has witched him, his wife. He will tell us that his wife has witched him and then she left him. And now he is in this condition. Yeah, and after this, we thought to ourselves, okay, let's just pray for him and let's see um, and that he will be delivered. We start praying for him. And normally, um, because I've been praying for people before who were demon possessed and also um, demon oppressed, and normally I will see that those demons will manifest. Something will happen, they will start talking to us or will be resistant towards the deliverance but I don't see anything manifesting in him he will just be still like he was before he'll look around he will do weird things but nothing is manifesting in him and I thought to myself wow okay I expected something different to happen but maybe it's just something that I didn't uh, see before and we will keep praying uh, and then encouraging him just speaking life into him just speaking truth over him he will start crying and just yeah, like almost hysterically he will cry and then he will come back to his mind and say wow like what is happening to me he will see that he had something in his hands and say like what is this like why do I have this in my hand and he will throw it away and then look at his hands again and say like like what is happening realizing that he was not like doing well and I was happy because I, I thought oh wow now we're seeing some breakthrough and I believe we saw some breakthrough, but shortly, shortly after that, he will again do weird stuff and then like losing his mind again. And he will tell us, hey guys, please don't leave me because if you go away, I will lose my mind again. Like, uh, please do, don't go away. But like after some time, we saw like, some, nothing is happening and we thought, okay, we need to find out more about him and who he is, where he's coming from. We asked his uh, neighbors here, like the, the man, if he knows where he lives. He gave, us, he gave us direction and told us that he lives with his parents. So we got in our car again and um, went to just look for his house. We found his house and we found also his father and mother living there. They were very happy to see us and said, um, please come sit down and spend some time with us. And we started asking them questions and just finding out more about Festo. And the father will share with us his story. And he said that two years ago, uh, Festo was part of a church. He was one of the leaders there. And um, some missionaries will come and just be at the church, help them a little bit. And they saw some potential in Festo. And at that time, the pastor, the local pastor was not around. So they will spend time with Pesto and just encourage him and tell him, Hey Pesto, you're a pastor and we see the potential in you. And just encourage him and try to encourage him. And then they will leave. The pastor will come back and just hear about uh, Pesto and the relationship that he has with uh, those missionaries. And he got jealous. He said, Pesto, you can no longer be here. I don't want you to be around. So he casted him out, like, go away. I don't want to be around. And Festus said to himself, okay, I will be a pastor by myself. I will start a church. Some people went, uh, came with him and he started this church. He was in the process of building a church building. But at this moment, those missionaries were no longer around. So he was on by himself. And his former pastor will be still jealous and then try to speak against him to other people and just discourage him and put all this pressure on him. 
and then he had all these people following him but X also expecting him to build this church he has no finances making slow progress and then during that time he would start losing his mind and that's where it all started to happen he then was not like he was under this pressure and then not thinking r rightly like and then his wife will also not understand what is happening and just she decided to leave him and that where it got worse he um, was not coming home like and then just saying weird things and then act in a weird way and that's where it all began and our his father told us that since then he was not coming back in his mind there were sometimes there were moments where he will wake up in the morning and say like hey uh, i will pray for you guys and then kind of showing signs that he was okay but nothing happened and then sadly his father will also take him to a witch doctor but it didn't help and festo like from time to time we will come to his mind and say like only god can help me uh, no, nothing else can help me but only god and he had this hope um, for the last two years and now we are here and um, finding him in his condition we prayed again for him but we didn't see breakthrough also i really believe that it was not by chance that we met him i believe that god wants to see him healed even though we didn't see it that at that moment and yeah guys i just wanted to share with you the story about festo and that we met him we prayed for him, but we didn't see a breakthrough. But still, we believe that God has a plan for his life. And we believe that he will come back to his mind. He will, His life will be restored. I strongly believe that. But also, I wanted to share with you that this is sometimes how things are in life. And also, especially in ministry, that you, you wish to see, those, to see those breakthroughs. You want to see those battles to be uh, won. But sometimes it's a longer fight than we expect it to be. And that's what's happening right now with Pesto. We promise him that we will share his story with other people and also ask other people to pray for him. And therefore, I just want to encourage you to pray for Pesto for his healing. And I will go back to Ukurewe and of course I will visit him. I hope that I will meet him again and then see uh, this breakthrough. Of course, um, when his healing will happen, I will share this um, with you guys but as for now please share with others also um, that they may pray for him and declare healing over, healing over his life but yeah guys um, I just want you um, to know that and also um, thank you from, uh, so much for watching and um, hearing the story there's more stories to be told of course and if you want to hear more stories and great testimonies uh, leave a um, comment below but also, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, uh, make sure to subscribe and just being up to date what is happening in uh, my life and on the missions field. But also, make sure to check out the videos that are already on the channel. There are some great stories that I already shared. But yeah, I hope you guys um, yeah, like the story, but also uh, keep praying for Festo. And I see you the next time when I put out another video. Until then. See you.